Hi everybody, thanks for joining us here at Power Mods. You know, I get a lot of questions. Guys ask me what I carry in my backpack when I'm riding. I'll set the bag up depending on what kind of riding I'm going for. If I'm just going out for a day ride, I might set it up a little lighter. But right now, I'll show you how I set it up for a four-day ride at my camp. So I went out and I got this Motor Fist backpack. It's called the Cornus. Now this thing holds a lot of gear. It is very comfortable. It's got nice big wide straps. It's got a nice solid back here so I can stuff all kinds of parts and pieces in there, you know, belts, and it doesn't drive into my back. It also has this nice bottom strap that keeps the pack nice and tight to my body when I'm riding. I've been riding with this for a couple of weeks now, jamming all kinds of stuff into it. Way too much just to make sure that it's big and heavy. I want to see how it rides, and it's great. Now I'm riding with a Snowcross open face style helmet. It's always essential to carry an extra set of goggles for when one set fogs up. Just keep them here in this nice fleece lined little pocket on top. Easy access, you can get in there, swap out your goggles really quickly. Now anything that I'm going to need to get quick access to, I keep it right here in the front pocket. Got my Fox Float Shock Pump, got my Snow Bungee Brush Saw. I always put some hand warmers in, and you know, when it's a really cold day, I'll rip this pack open and I'll fire it up when I'm in the truck, make sure they're nice and warm, because they last at least eight hours. This says eight hours, but it's a good 10 to 12 hours. I'll start them up before I even hit the trail, that way I know when I grab them, they're going to be nice and warm. If things turn south on you and you end up in the bush at night, got to have a flashlight. I keep this LED flashlight pretty handy. And you know what, I keep that in the front pocket as well. If you have a bag with a big giant main compartment and you just start stuffing things in there, there's nothing worse than opening that up when you're on the trail, it's minus 25 out, you've got to take your gloves off, poke around through there trying to find the one little part and piece that you need. You've got to keep them organized, that's what this does. Now, you mountain riders aren't going to need these, but guys in eastern Canada, central Canada, riding the lakes, you've got to have a set of ice picks. I keep these handy at all times, I keep them in the bag, pop them out if I know I'm going to be crossing water, especially if you're on a lake that you're not familiar with. you got to have your ice picks. And finally for my front pocket, my wife got me this Bear Gorillas Gerber knife. This has all kinds of cool little functions on it. It's got a little fire starter right here and it's a decent quality knife. So I carry that just in case I need a knife. You know, I've even been on the trail and run into wolves. So I like to have a knife handy. It's always nice to have a spare set of gloves. I keep these in the side pocket. You never know when you're going to need them. Sometimes when you're just unloading your truck, you get your gloves all wet just from touching things that are slushy or wet, your sled. So it's nice to have an extra set of gloves handy. And when I know it's going to get cold for the weekend, I got to bring my big fur mittens. These things rock. I made these. Everybody loves them on the videos. And if my handlebar warmers break, these things always keep me warm. I always keep a spare balaclava just in case I get mine all wet from breathing on it. Or, you know what, these things are pretty small and they're dark. Pretty easy to lose them. I keep my toque handy, breath box for my helmet, and I always keep a spare pair of socks. Now, it sounds a little silly, but even after driving to the location where we drop our sleds, sometimes your feet just get a little sweaty in the truck. So I'll just pop off my socks, put these fresh ones on, nice and warm, nice and dry. A good way to start the day with your boots. And I never keep my boots on while I'm driving to my location with my truck because you know what, you're going to sweat in the boots, you're going to get wet, there's going to be moisture, and that's going to get cold when you're on the trail. I've put everything I've talked about in this bag so far, and there's still tons of room in this main compartment. There's a secondary compartment. There's a compartment right here if you want to put a water pack in, a little camel pack. I wore my camel pack the other day, it was minus 25. It didn't freeze up in here, but the little mouthpiece, it did freeze up even when it was stuffed inside the strap. So. Minus 25, it's just not going to work. Those things work better on a mild day. Now, I'll be honest, 700 sips a little bit of fuel. Sometimes I might need a little extra. So I carry this safety siphon with me. I know you guys are saying, look at all the stuff he carries. But I'm that guy on the trail that when you need something, I've pretty much always got it with me. So I keep this handy in my bag. If somebody gets low on fuel, it's a really easy way to transfer fuel from one sled to another. Now I always keep a little bit of extra fuel line as well. This stuff has come in handy. Sometimes fuel line rubs up against a muffler, chafes through. You never know when you're going to need this. 
I'm all about safety. I don't know if you all know this, but I'm a firefighter, so I got to make sure that I feel comfortable heading back into the back country that I have a first aid kit and the ability to keep warm and to spend at least one night in the bush if I have to. So I've got this sport utility blanket and basically what that is, is a reflective blanket that you can use to sit on. You can put it up on a wall inside a little cavern that you make inside the snow so it's reflective, brings the heat back on you. You can use it as a shelter to keep the rain or the snow off the top of you or you can wrap yourself in it to keep warm. That reflective coating keeps that heat in there nicely. Now I've also got this Sol bivy sack. You can crawl inside this thing. It's not going to be like the Hilton. You know, it's going to keep you alive, but it's not going to keep you super warm. It's just going to keep you comfortable enough to spend the night. Got the little medical kit here, band-aids, tweezers, a bunch of little tricks in here in case you cut yourself, maybe get some blisters. It's very handy to have. I've also got this little cool saw kit. It's got a bunch of different little parts and pieces on it. Little LED flashlight, little tiny knife, little whistle on it little compass, it's got a little fire starter, reflective mirror, in a nutshell it's a very handy little survival kit, even has a fire starter in here. I also keep my spare belt in my bag, I don't put it under the hood, there's really no place to keep it there, I just pop it inside there. I keep this snow bungee toe strap and slick tape with me, just for when I need to pull Keely out with this broken snowmobile. When I used to fly in the bush a lot, I'd just take a jar of peanut butter, toss it in the float of the airplane, I'd just leave that there. So if I knew that I had to spend a night on an island, on some little lake somewhere, I had that peanut butter to keep me going through the night. So now I just keep a set of nuts inside the bag, granola bar, little jug of water to keep me hydrated. Now for tools, I generally use my own. I get rid of the kit that comes with the snowmobile and I pack my own stuff together because I know what nuts and bolts I have on that because you know I got these mod sleds and I change things up. So I get a wrench for every nut and bolt I have on that sled. I use a screwdriver, standard and a Phillips. Make sure I have a plug wrench, spare set of plugs. I always bring vice grips, extra big wrench for tightening my belt and I keep this here. This is a belt changing tool. Keep a set of Allen keys and Torx, and I keep a spare pull start rope if I need it. So one other thing that I'm going to carry on the bag now that I didn't carry last week is this little snow bungee scoop. Now I know it looks kind of gimmicky, but I ended up at the end of the day with a lot of snow on my sled up inside the tunnel. When I got back home, I just used this and I scooped all that stuff off, broke the ice, chiseled it out. This is actually pretty strong and well made. You know what? And I lost. 10 or 15 pounds of snow and ice on there that I shouldn't have had in the first place. So you think you can just grab it with your gloves and chip it off, but you can't. You can't get it off that easy. This little thing here works actually very well. Also has a fire starter in the back of it. That's pretty handy to have. I keep all my tools in this handy one little piece kit here. Just pop it out, put it on the seat of my sled if I have to do any work. And that's everything. One last thing, if I'm heading out in the really deep powder like we'll be doing at the end of this month in Gas Bay, I always bring my shovel. This Cornus backpack has a really nice handy little place for it. Just pop it right on here. That's it. Now my bag's pretty full. If I know that I'm going to be out and I don't need all this gear, I'll sort of pop something out. I'll stick this snow bungee either in the bag or it goes in the mountain addiction bag on the back of my sled. But you know what, this is a great tool to have. If you've seen this thing in action, you know how well it works. We're going to make a bunch of videos showing how well that works here in the near future. So I bet you're thinking this bag weighs too much and that I'm crazy for carrying all this stuff. You're probably thinking 30 or 40 pounds. But you know what, I've got this handy little tool that I got from First Place Parts. It's a scale that I use to set my track up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weigh it and I'm going to show you. Okay, so what are we looking at? Just under 21 pounds. That's not bad at all. So I just sort of pop the bag on, tighten the shoulder straps up just a little bit. The main thing, the main supporting hardware is this bottom strap here. This goes around your hips. You want it nice and tight. It takes the pressure off your shoulders. I just sort of snug that up a little bit. It doesn't fatigue you by the end of the day, all that weight pulling down on your shoulders. Although it is 20 pounds, at the end of the day, it can seem like quite a bit. 
tighten up this top strap here to keep the top of the bag from pulling back on your back when you're riding. And that's very comfortable to wear. I'll have nothing sticking in my back and it's a mere 20 pounds of essentials to have when you're out riding the backcountry or playing in the mountains. When you want to buy any of this stuff, make sure you give firstplaceparts.com a call. Tell them Louie from PowerMod sent you. They ship free in the United States and USPS to Canada. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.